You're listening to the Casting for Fun podcast, the show that talks about entertainment, sports, music, and inspirational stories for all to enjoy. We're glad you could join us today. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Now, here is your host, Albert Pineda. Welcome, everybody, to the Casting for Fun podcast. I am your host, Albert Pineda. And uh, happy Halloween. Happy belated Halloween. I hope everyone had an enjoyable time celebrating this past weekend and that it was a safe, fun time for everybody as well. My my kids, my wife and I, we all had a great time and we're looking forward to the rest of the holiday season coming up for the remaining part of the year. Uh, for this week's episode of the Casting for Fun podcast, I have a very special guest lined up, uh, Jeffrey Haskins. Jeff is the father of uh, Kimberly Cross, who's been on the podcast many times with her husband, Nathan, to discuss shows that we like. But of course, uh, Jeff... And the, the whole Haskin family mean a whole lot to the Pineda family. Jeff has been a great friend to my parents and a great friend and mentor to me. And not just me, but several other of my friends who I grew up with in Temple City, as Jeff was our uh, youth leader for our church group, for you know, the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. Uh, we refer to him as our young men's leader. He was a wonderful, great man. He, he is. And, of course, his... A uh, counselor and helper in the young men's organization, Don Drink, was as well, who uh, passed away back in 2007. But uh, nah, I, I think about Don all the time. I, I constantly think back to the uh, wonderful man that he was and the great friend that he was to, to me and to my family. So Jeff and I have a chance to honor and pay tribute to Don, as well as reflect on our time together in the young men's organization and to talk about our, our friends and the wonderful fun times that we had and crazy funny times too. <laughs> so it's definitely a great conversation I have with Jeff and I'm grateful that he was able to be on the podcast and I'm looking forward to the future having him on as a guest. As well. So here we go. This is my conversation with Jeff, Jeff Haskins on the Casting for Fun podcast. Joining me tonight on the Casting for Fun podcast is a really great special guest, uh, good good friend of the the Pineda family and a great friend and mentor to me it's Jeff Haskins Jeff how are you doing tonight I'm doing very well how are you I'm doing well too it's good to hear that you're doing well and I hope Audrey is too and it's always great to catch up with friends yeah we're doing real well thank you very much Oh, good to hear. Good to hear. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to hearing your stories. Uh, for those who don't know, uh, Jeff served as our youth leader in our church when all, all myself and my friends were teenagers back in the 90s. And we had some really fun, great times together. So I want to take the moment to reflect on that. And then, of course, Jeff has some really awesome, great experiences, I think, to share from his entire life. So I'm looking forward to just chatting about that for the podcast, because for the podcast, I really just chat about anything I want to. So. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's cool. Very cool. So I wanted to begin from the beginning, Jeff. So I know you you grew up in the Southern California area and attended uh, Rosemead High School. Uh, what do you want to share? What were some of your more memorable experiences growing up in this area? You know, um, I'm just thinking about that. Uh, when you mentioned it, it's funny in life, you don't get to spend so much time reflecting on the really good times because you've kind of got your your head down and I'm pushing forward and trying to make things work and helping my family and my friends. And, but, um, since you brought it up, um, I, you know, I, I've, I've been employed every day of my life since I was 10 years old when I started a, a paper route. I know that's not much of an employment, but I've always had this uh, desire to work. And one of the most interesting things I can think of during my adolescence and in my employment was working at toy town. Um, a toy store that's on Valley Boulevard, well, it was on Valley Boulevard in Rosemead. Uh, I remember the, that store. Yeah. 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 For the Zwick family. Um, I was 14 years old. I, I think yeah, I wasn't 14. I can't remember now. I think I was in the eighth grade and I used to walk by there every day on the way home. I had to get home from middle school uh, in order to uh, deliver my papers. And I thought, you know, this would be great if I could work in the toy store. And I, I went in there and, and started asking the owner, um if he was hiring and i mean you know i'm i'm probably like four foot six at the time and quite a bit younger than anyone else is working there but uh he said well if you like you know sure if you think you can handle it the warehouse of toy town at the time employed um a lot of um a lot of athletes from rosemead high school i think uh sports toy town next door was owned by the owner's son and he was a great sponsor of youth sports in Rosemead, in, in Rosemead High School specifically. 
And so uh, I was just this little little kid at the time, surrounded by a bunch of guys. It, 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 it may have seemed intimidating. I think the owner was afraid I'd be intimidated, but I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed uh, building bicycles and being on the floor. And I found I had a talent that uh, it was very obvious. I, I enjoyed playing with toys. And around Christmas time, he would have me set up racetracks, the slot car racetracks, and just play with them. And, and parents would come and ask my opinion, which, you know, what, I thought that was a, a, a blast. And I, and I really did that really to the exclusion of a lot of other activities, I know, but it really gave me a, a strong work ethic and taught me sales, taught me interpersonal relations. It really helped me on my mission and in my, in my life. But um, I remember that, that first year, um, I really was hyping up this particular um, race set by Tyco. And uh, we sold a bunch. And the boy, the owner, was really happy about it until the day after Christmas when they all started coming back because they were crap. Uh, I, it was, I thought, you know, that was something else. Um, he actually, he actually uh, uh, cut me off work for a couple of weeks there while they were um, taking back all the returns. I ain't kidding. It was, it was, it was something. He ended up returning a lot of those sets. Um, I really enjoyed that. And being, being employed, I was, I was employed after school until I was 18 years old at Toy Town, um, at which time I started uh, working in my grandfather's cabinet shop uh, pretty much full time uh, while I was preparing to, um, to serve my mission. Um, oh, very good. Very good. I, I can attest to you, Jeff, that just being the, the workhorse. I mean, you uh, were constantly working with, uh, I mean, uh, concrete, I mean, pouring out concrete, which is definitely no easy task. So, and uh, I, I personally never worked with you, but I know some of our good friends did like Nick and Derek and, and David Weston. Uh, and they all would tell me they, their bodies would be aching afterwards, but you would just keep plugging along, working hard. So you definitely developed a, a strong uh, work ethic throughout basically your entire life, which is really great to see. You know, you guys, you guys are uh, really are like my heart and soul. I don't know if you know this, but did you know that being the young men's president, the youth leader, was really my first uh, calling um, uh, after my mission? Oh, and I didn't know that. No. Yeah. Yeah, I was I was working so hard at uh, becoming a contractor and doing concrete work mm -hmm. that um, I never really took the time to serve in the church or to serve with the youth and uh, Bishop McKendrick. Um, I I don't know if it's okay or appropriate to, to use names. Um, oh, that's we're perfectly fine. Yeah, yeah. But he called me. You know, if, it's an interesting story and 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 another one that for probably for another time. Mm -hmm. But um, he called me to that calling. I got I to tell you, uh, I, I've told this story before, um, but there's one individual that really, really helped me a great deal. And it's someone that I know means a lot to you and a lot to all the boys. And that's, that's uh, Don Drink. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. You know, when I was called the, uh, the current or uh, former young men's president, and I, I don't want to use his name necessarily, but... Um, mm -hmm. He told me, I, I received the calling and I went to see him. Um, and he told me, he said, he said, you know, Jeff, um, you're, you're really going to hate this. You're, gonna, you're not going to have a very good time. You're particularly not going to be very fond of some individuals. You know, you know who they are because you're one of them. Um, and uh, <laughs> yeah, you, you and Matt and David, I mean, he just oh, said, okay. <laughs> he said, look, you guys, this is a disaster. You're going you're gonna to hate it. I don't know what to tell you. Good luck. Um, and that's how he left it. And I was left with a real weird taste about it. Like, like, wow, what did I, what am I getting into? Um, like I said, Albert, this was my first calling. And uh, I went back to, um, to Rob McKendrick, who told me that my first decision needs to be who my counselor should be. And he said, uh, he said, I suggest you choose Don Drink who had been serving as a counselor. And so I said, okay, is it okay if I go talk to him? And he said, he said, oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Go, go talk to, go talk to Don. And I did. And you know what? I told him what this other individual had said. And Don said, oh no, oh no. He, he's got it all on. Hey, listen, just, just all you got to do is show up. I'll, I'll be, I'll, 
you're going to be fine. These guys are the cream of the crop. These guys are absolutely a blast, and you're going to really you're going to really enjoy this. And uh, he really lifted that anxiety that I had. Um, and uh, I got to I got to tell you, and you well, I think you well know this. Um, Don Don Drink was a very special person. You know, he had he was the coolest of the cool. Mm-hmm. And, and by that, I mean, he was very comfortable with himself and he was always real. He was always honest. Um, and he meant, he meant a lot to me. And I think he meant a lot to you guys too. I, I, I'm, I don't, I don't want to speak for you uh, in particular or, or the other, the other boys, but uh, I think we all owe um, a little bit of a debt of gratitude to Don for the for the uh, sacrifices that he made of his time and his and his uh, his um, all of his provision, everything that he was, he put into that calling. He loved you boys so much, um, and he taught me uh, he taught me the joy of serving, and uh, I really I really appreciate that. And when you mentioned this podcast coming up, I thought to myself, I just couldn't get Don out of my mind. Um, I think I think you'd probably agree. Uh, he was he was absolutely one of a kind, and uh, I really I really miss him. And to this day, whenever I receive a calling, and I'm asked uh, to pick my counselors, um, I, that's the first person I always mention. I always say Don Drink, and the and the state president will look at me and and say, uh, Who the heck is Don Drink? And I say, Oh, never mind. I just have it's just you know, I'm just paying homage to the very best counselor friend and. Uh, associate I ever had in the church. Um, I, I just think I just think that he was the best and he really showed me uh, how to throw myself into the calling and and be with you guys and uh, I, I really enjoyed it. I, to this day I'd probably pay money to be back there with you boys and I have served as young men's president two other times besides that for a total of about nine years. Um, and I've had I've had some very good experiences, and, but I have never really grown to love the people that I served with like I loved you guys. Um, you guys, you guys have really meant a lot to me. Oh, thank you so much for the the kind words, Jeff. Uh, yes, you you definitely were a huge mentor and influence, and a, a great person for all of us. Uh, almost like a father figure. And Don was that way as well. So it was so great to, to interact with both of you and just the wonderful times we had together. I mean, like you said, Don was one of a kind. And I know Don and Ginger and you and Audrey meant so much to my family. So it was great to have those relationships. And then for this podcast, I mean, just to reminisce and re- have it recorded. So it's documented. So we never forget these mem- uh, moments. Uh, I wanted to ask you if you had a particular favorite moment or activity that we had together while in the, the youth program of the Temple City Ward. One that I particularly enjoyed, and I don't think this was uh, like an official one, it was just kind of just getting together as friends, is when you took us all to uh, 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 Paisano, Paisanos in, in Paisanos, Hermosa Beach. Yeah. I, that was exactly what was going through my mind. <laughs> Do you remember that story pretty well? Oh, well, I was doing a job down on the strand, uh, right there on Hermosa Beach, um, Redondo Beach, I mean, uh, right there across from the comedy store. And I, I was remodeling an old gas station, turning it into a, um, like a Starbucks type place. And uh, uh, for lunch, I walked across the street to this little pizza joint called Paisano's. It was a New York pizza. And uh, I never in a million years would have thought that, that uh, that I would like a pizza better than a BJ's or Petrillo's, mm-hmm. but um, that was good pizza, wasn't it? It was, yes. It, it was excellent. I think it was well worth the drive down to Redondo, and and uh, um, I I probably ate there every day while I was while I was working it at that uh, at that particular location. I, I got a couple of great stories about that. I'll, I'll tell you I'll tell you one real quick. Okay. Um, I had a bobcat, which is a little skid steer. Um, it's not called, it's it's really not a tractor, but people call them a tractor. Um, at the end of the day, I would have, there was no room on the job site for the porta potty. So we'd have to set it out on the sidewalk. And, uh, and then at night I'd have to bring it into the work site that was, uh, fenced off. Um, and one particular Friday afternoon late, I went to scoop up 
this uh, porta potty with my bobcat to bring it in. And there was a line of people waiting to get into the comedy store, which was right across the street. And I and I and I lifted the John up, you know, and I and I back up, and everyone starts laughing and clapping, and I'm thinking, oh, they kind of they enjoy the the show, you know. So I I did a couple of spins with the bobcat and uh, and then planted it. I didn't realize there was someone inside the porta potty at the time. <laughs> And this and this dude, he he worked for me. His name was Tom. We called him Big Tom because he was the, like six foot nine. He was about four hundred and ten pounds, and he was covered in blue. You know, I mean, you know what? <laughs> and he was so ticked off, man. He he came out. He said, "You're doing that on purpose." And I said, "Dude, I you know what?" <laughs> everyone everyone across the street laughing. Anyhow, I'm sorry. I got you know. I digress. So. I took it up. I, I said, you know what? One of these, one of these nights, we got to, we got to load up Moby. You remember Moby? I do remember Moby. Yeah. <laughs> Moby was a 1975 LTD wagon, Ford LTD wagon, had a 460 big block, had a cam in it, had um, aluminum heads, metal brock heads and a manifold. And um, it, it, the, the thing really boogied. It really moved. We, I remember taking you guys to uh, state dances in that car. And uh, we'd get on on ramps, and these guys in these little Mustang 5.0s would try to get around us, and I'd punch it, and we'd blow them apart while Nick and Derek were pressing ham on the back window of that, of that LTD wagon. <laughs> so we get down to uh, Paisano's, and I think your brother was driving himself. If yeah, I yeah. And, uh, <laughs> and uh, when we were done, no one wanted to ride with Fernando. <laughs> we, we, we all piled into Moby. And we're heading on the, I think it was the 105 freeway or something like that. And he couldn't keep up with us. So we slowed down a little bit. And all you guys were flashing signs at him and dropping your cords and <laughs> got the window at him. And he couldn't get away from us because whatever he was driving wasn't as fast as the, as the LTD was. Oh, it was just, it was just a, a blast. I mean, I, I, I don't know if we went down to Paisano's more than once, but um, that was, that was a lot of fun. And I, you know, that's something that I really enjoyed was spending time with you guys um, in recreational settings like that. Mm -hmm. um, I think, I don't know. What do you think? How did you like it? Oh, I loved it. it. It was really, really great. It was great to, to bond with you in that way, to, to think of you not just as a, a leader and Don just as a leader, but that you guys were our friends and that we, we could uh, spend time and, and hang out even outside of the, the church setting, like, you know, I remember multiple times going over to your house to play uh, Mario Kart on Nintendo 64. Yeah. Just having a blast doing that and having pizza parties there. Uh, so, yeah, there was, I, I think it was very uh, inspiring, I think, and, and made the, the program great to, to have it that way, where our, our leaders would actually be our friends in, in a way. And, and I guess it helped us to to maintain activity in the church and then continue till to this day, which I think is very, very important. Yeah, I, I, I do too, uh, Albert. And uh, I've tried to carry that on. I've, I've served in many different callings since then. And I always try to maintain that same enthusiasm. And it all stems from um, loving the people that you're serving with and that you're serving. Um, because technically it's funny, you know, I, I guess I should have said, maybe sh I should have set a more appropriate example. Um, uh, and, and some certain members of that particular bishopric would counsel me to not get so friendly as if, as if I needed to maintain a certain decorum around you guys. But, but truthfully, I'd have to say that was that you, you guys, you guys became friends of mine. I, I just attended one of David's kids baptism in, um, Fort Seal over here, Lancaster. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, I think he's got like 12 kids or something. <laughs> I don't know. He's, I think he's like single, seven, he's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's single handedly keeping Ford Motor Company in business because he keeps having <laughs> to buy bigger and bigger vehicles. Uh huh. Um, but, uh, but what a blast to see you, uh, you young men, each and every one of you, uh, serve missions and come home. And I got to work with a lot of you in the industry. You know, and Derek worked with me a lot, uh, Nick did. David worked with me for a long time, and some of the experiences of David and Derek uh, and and Nick working together on a on a concrete job uh, it's like the Keystone Cops trying to trying to finish concrete or uh, pump concrete is <laughs> really something. I, I, I'm not <laughs> sure why I didn't get you on one of those job sites. I think you were always busy with school and your videos and stuff like that. 
I, I think so. And uh, I guess maybe I did hear uh, from from Derek particularly that some of the, the jobs were kind of hard. So I think I was kind of more more yeah, uh, inclined to want to do like the easier work with Don, like delivering light, lighting fixtures. <laughs> well, you, 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 you know what? Uh, I'll say this about Albert Pineda. He, you, you're a thoughtful one. You are. You, you, oh. You're a planner and a thoughtful one. Oh, thank um, you. Thank you. I, I, I do believe that to be true. And, and it's, it's evident by uh, who you got to marry and your kids. And, uh, you know, you have such a happy, cheerful demeanor. I think you've learned a lot of good lessons, um, not just from me and Don and your other leaders, but also uh, by being introspective, by being able to understand yourself. And uh, I really dig that about you. And same thing with same thing with David and Derek and Nick and Tad. And, you know, I never really got a lot of time with Tad and Fernando. Um, I don't know if you remember, but I came into the picture just about the time they were about to leave on their missions. Yes, I would have been like 95, 96. Something like that. I think we had one of those of those uh, big bear trips with them. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, yeah, we were all so ashamed of ourselves. And um, <laughs> a, a, little, a little inside joke there. Um, and uh, <laughs> and then they then they left on their missions. I believe they were already called to serve their missions at that time. Um, I want to say, yeah, because I think Fernando left in the beginning of 2006. I'm sorry, 2000, I apologize, <laughs> 1996. So like in January or February of 96. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, because we only had that one really big activity with those two boys. Um, and then uh, and then it was just us. Mm-hmm. I, I don't remember. And, and I hate and I apologize to anyone that I'm forgetting, uh, honestly. Uh, but uh, th- there was definitely a core group there. You, Matt. Um, David, I get to, I talked to Matt just a couple of months ago and, um, you know, I just, yeah, I'm really proud of you guys. You, you guys really did well for yourselves, despite the fact that, that I was your leader for a while. <laughs> Although, thanks, Jeff. Thanks, Jeff. And then, uh, yeah, I guess just to throw a quick shout out to some of the other guys. So you had, uh, Kevin and, and Scott Slight and then Brett Millsaps and my, my wow. brother, Danny. So, Right, right, right. Uh, probably a few guys younger than that too as well but i, I think they might have been the uh, uh the next presidency after uh i think with mike Payne, if i'm not mistaken yeah i think you're right i think i got the tail i got the very beginnings of bruiser um and then uh and danny uh i think he was kind of part of our group too just because he was your brother yeah anything um but the other kids the other kids i think might have been might have been coming along oh you know what uh kevin I just saw him about uh, maybe a year or two ago too. He's doing fantastic. Oh, good awesome. for him. Good. Yeah. Um, in fact, that would be a really interesting one for you. I, I, he's, he's a successful small business owner. Um, he's got a heck of a nice piece of property in, um, up in the foothills uh, above Riverside. Um, oh, okay. Yeah, he's, he, he's, he's really a great guy. Um, but, you know, uh, they were very into scouting, into boy scouting. Mm-hmm. And um, I don't know if you remember uh, that about me, but uh, I'm not. I wasn't. Oh, I do remember that. Absolutely, I do. <laughs> I used to say, if I could just have 20 minutes with the first presidency, I think I could get us out of scouts. But, <laughs> luckily, it just happened. So I didn't have to worry about that but anymore. But um, back then, you know, we had two separate nights every week. We had, uh, I think you, we all got together on Tuesday nights for mutual and then scouting was on Wednesday nights or vice versa. I can't remember. I, I want to say scouting was Tuesday and uh, mutual was on Wednesday. Okay. I think, I think you're right. I think you're right. And uh, we did, uh, you know, never the twain meeted, but I believe that Glenn Slight, Kevin's dad was the uh, scout master mm-hmm. and they were, they were pretty heavy into scouts and, you know, that's, that's great. They, you know, I'm sure they did well with that. I, I, uh, I, I, I really can't say anything. My, my son's an Eagle Scout mm-hmm. and uh, both of my son-in-laws are Eagle Scouts. And I've got, I've got nothing but great things to say about that program uh, at this point. But um, I, am, uh, I, I wasn't uh, into Scouts at the time. And um, I think that we had a wonderful program um, uh, for ourselves because I don't think you guys were really into Scouts either, were you? Not so much when I was younger, but then as I got older, I kind of lost interest because it was a lot of bookwork stuff. And that kind of, 
um, additional homework on top of what I was already doing in high school didn't really appeal to me anymore. So, <laughs> right, right. I think Matthew, Matt was really into scouts. I think he got his Eagle Scout, as a matter of fact. I believe he did. Yes, yes. But I, but I do believe that was more of a career. He was another very thoughtful uh, young man. You know, he, he was a planner and uh, evidenced by the fact that he's uh, very successful in his field, too. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, but that's, yeah, so I, I don't know how I got off on that. I didn't want to start talking about scouts, but when I, <laughs> uh, you know, my son um, played football, I coached him um, actually semi-retired so that I could coach him for a while. And he sustained a very severe concussion um, in his uh, freshman year of high school and oh, uh, spent a significant amount of time recovering from that after mm -hmm. which there was no, there's no way well, he wasn't going to be any Steve Young anyhow. So mm -hmm. it's a, uh, so he got, he got um, to stay active in church. Uh, we, we got a new scout master. We hadn't had an Eagle Scout in years and years. And this new scout master happened to be a friend of mine. And I, and I said, well, you know, Jeffrey was about turning 16 at the time, hadn't done more than two days of scouting. And I said, don't worry about it if he doesn't make Eagle Scout, you know, as long as he's active in the program. And he said, oh, he'll be an Eagle. And uh, sure enough, he, he got into it. And he, he earned his Eagle. And um, yeah, doing well. Oh, good. Good, good to hear. Good to hear. Yeah, this has been really great, Jeff. I've, I've really enjoyed reminiscing about uh, uh, old times with uh, good friends, who, some of which, I, some of them I haven't seen recently. Some of them I have kept pretty close contact with. So that's, it's really great to hear that, uh, that everyone's doing happy and well, and then you especially, and that little Jeffy's doing good. I guess he's not little anymore, right? <laughs> no, he's a beast. You know what he's doing. He's in, uh, he's actually moving back to, um, uh, I guess it's North Carolina, Camp Lejeune in Quantico. He's a, he's a special forces uh, Marine Raider. Oh, um, good for him. Very good. He's, he's a beast. He turned out, he turned out, uh, he turned out very big. <laughs> That's all I gotta say. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's very, very successful. He's starting his second enlistment and his new assignment. He's, he actually earned a place on the team to be involved in, um, special operations, uh, command back in, uh, um, at Fort Lejeune so oh good for him very good very good yeah. He's and, good. And, oh good good yeah and then actually in recent years I've actually had the opportunity to become really good friends with uh with Kimmy because obviously yeah. at the time uh, Kimmy was Kimmy and Brianne were much younger than us so obviously we <laughs> we kept our distance <laughs> yeah yeah but uh, <laughs> but yeah uh, Kimmy and her husband Nathan are really great friends of mine uh, they were previously living not just here in the same city of Upland but the same complex as us which was really I cool remember i remember and they really cherish your friendship they, oh they, yeah uh, yeah you guys are a lot alike you know it's pretty yeah. neat how you ended up in the same area and have a lot of the same interests yeah yeah so it's been great to have i've had them on the, the podcast as well many times talking about uh uh streaming shows that we like so that's been really fun too uh yeah. was, was there anything else about uh our time in young men's that you wanted to bring up oh my goodness well i i remember i remember going to state dances with you guys and and uh which I was also counseled not to do, as a matter of fact. But oh, I'm okay. that, 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 wasn't that some of the best times we ever had? Oh, that, that was so much fun. Yeah, like you said, I mean, there was, I think, one time when you were right, driving the, the Moby, which, again, uh, was the big white station wagon that looked like uh, Moby Dick from the book Moby Dick. Uh, yeah. I think at one point we had a bunch of hitchhikers from the stake, like, jump in. So we had maybe, like, I don't know, overcapacity in the, the car just to get somewhere, which yeah. was kind of funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so much fun. We And those trips up to Big Bear, mm -hmm. um, renting those cabins. And I, I don't know if you remember, I, I used to go up ahead of time and make sure that we got the best cabin for the boys. And, and we one time we went up and we took all the televisions out of the girls' cabin and put them in the boys' <laughs> cabin so that we could, we could hook up our video games. And, uh, and, and, and you know, honestly, I'm, I'm still very ashamed of that. So much. Oh, but, um, absolutely. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> another, another shout out to the ashamed, you know. But, uh, uh, yeah, you know, it's just some of my the best times, and I, I've got so many. You, you were talking about growing up in Southern California. You know, the beach, the beach uh, was a big thing for us mm -hmm. too. You know, jumping on the bus on Rosemary Boulevard and shooting down to Seal Beach um, and uh, body surfing, and then coming home. That was that was a big deal. That that those were good times. And when when I received the call to serve as your guys' uh, youth leader, um, I, I kind of wanted that same thing for you. Um, the times are changing and it wasn't that easy for you guys to just jump on a bus. So 
I, I remember taking you guys down to BJ's in Balboa uh, Island and uh, just trying to give you guys a taste of what I enjoyed so much when I was growing up. Um, and I hope that I hope that you guys do that and is still still to this day and and uh, and know that that's you know it's one of the great pleasures of living in Southern California. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I remember that trip. In fact, uh, I mean, there was times I think when we had like a, a steak beach party where afterward you would all take us to to the BJ's in Balboa or we even did a like an overnight weekend yeah. uh, at, at uh, one of the, the rental properties there. So, so much. I mean, it, it's 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 too hard to really remember everything because there are so many great things that we did in, back in that program. Yeah, the memories just come flooding back. And I I don't want to turn this into a remember when. Uh, yeah. <laughs> But, but uh, we ought to put together some kind of a virtual reunion. Uh, it, it, it seems almost inconceivable that we can all get together and spend a weekend up in Big Bear again. You've got kids. David's repopulating Lancaster all on his own. We, uh, <laughs> we you know, I'm busy. I'm, I'm stretched between North Carolina, Texas, Provo, and here. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's, pretty inc- it's pretty hard to get back together in person. Um, but this would be cool if we had something like this that we could all just log on to and and reminisce. <laughs> oh, absolutely! Yeah, I know. I know. I mean, Nick's a frequent uh, guest on the show, and I even have a, a arrangements to meet up with Derek in a, in a few weeks. So that should be really fun as well. So I'm going to try and also reach out to some of the other guys. So I think we can arrange something like that. That we definitely could do something like that. That would be awesome. I also have a lot of interest in Dodger stuff too. I, I noticed that you do also, and. Um, we could talk a lot about that. When I was a little boy, my grandmother um, had season tickets to the Dodgers, and that included, and I was the only one of her grandchildren that really liked baseball, so we, well, that's not entirely true. I think she just liked me more than the other grandchildren, to be honest with you, but mm-hmm. I got to go to uh, these um, a couple of times in a row uh, at the end of spring training. Back then, the Dodgers did spring training in Vero Beach, Florida. And they would fly back to L.A. just prior to opening day, and we would have a luncheon. So I actually got to attend these luncheons, sitting at the table with Steve Garvey and Ron Say and Davey Lopes and Bill Russell, all my all of my heroes um, at the at the time, and and uh, and attend several several games every year. Um, they were always really good seats back then, and yeah, there's a lot of you know. I, I so I think we have more in common than than just our our mutual. Uh, admiration and uh, the time that we spent together in young men's I didn't realize that you guys were such big Dodger fans oh yeah yeah back in that that same time frame in the the 90s uh, I, I would go to games constantly with uh, with the Turners and with Fernando and then uh, in the 2000s when Nick and I were roommates I mean we had season tickets or a mini plan so we would go to several games so yeah the Dodgers are, are something we really love and enjoy uh, and the team's been fantastic over the past decade just yeah, quite haven't gotten over the hump just yet. I mean, I, I kind of wish we'd gotten more than one World Series championship, but uh, yeah, it's, all, it's all about timing now. But you know, these yeah. guys tend to get hot at the right time of the year. But yeah, I was in high school when I was working at my grandpa's cabinet shop. It was right below um, Elysian Park, right below Dodger Stadium, was my grandfather's cabinet shop, and and I would go up there and sit in the bleachers and watch Fernando. Whenever Fernando uh, Valenzuela was pitching, I, <laughs> I'd go and watch when my friends would meet me and. That, that, those were good times, you know, so much about this. And, and thinking of relocating out of state, I don't know, man. California's got its issues and it's expensive, but maybe it's worth it. This is cool. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, very good, very good. Uh, I wanted to touch on another subject of your youth or actually, I guess, uh, another mutual interest that we share, which would be that of uh, classic rock. So, I mean, for all the times that we got together, it was really cool having just the great soundtrack to to listen to. So uh, everything from Led Zeppelin to uh, Aerosmith to ACDC. In fact, uh, Nick and I have had the opportunity to see uh, Aerosmith finally in concert. This would have been back in 2006. And we had a funny, funny experience with that where uh, my car broke down on the way over and uh, David Weston had to come and bail us out. Uh, and do some uh, special uh, finagling with my engine hoses on the spot using a special lubricant. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's cool. But uh, but yeah, so I wanted to ask you about your experiences uh, growing up, getting to see a lot of these bands, uh, like so a- ACDC and Aerosmith and all your favorites. If you can share some of your experiences going to those shows back then. Yeah, you know, um, 
when I was when I was about uh, 15 or 16, I can't remember exactly when, I think I was 15, there was a, well, to this day, it's still there. It's a, it's a private storage building. They have, uh, they rent out rooms, you know, to store your, your stuff, like your gear. It's like one of those, well, you work at one, right? I do, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. So this is the one on Valley Boulevard near Walnut Grove on the north Oh, side. I'm familiar with the area, yeah, yeah. Okay, so um, these guys in bands would rent out these rooms and they would, um, instead of storing their stuff, they would put mattresses against the wall and they would rehearse. And uh, a friend of mine invited me um, and a couple of girls, you know, we, we'd go and we'd sit on our, on our butts, Indian style there and watch these bands, uh, bands that were up and coming at the time. One of them was called uh, Genesis, but it, they changed their names. Um, they took the name of the, uh, of the guitar player and drummer, Alex Van Halen and Eddie Van Halen. Oh, very cool. And they were, they were just working out their stuff. And uh, we, would, we would watch them and then end up going with them to Gazzari's uh, in LA and uh, watching bands. Uh, Motley Crue was one of them that was just starting and they were, they were pretty awful. Back then. Oh. <laughs> but, uh, but we, saw, we saw a lot of stuff, a lot of concerts. Back then, for 14 bucks, you could get into these concerts. And uh, we, did, we did several three-day uh, festivals like Cal Jam, Cal Jam 2, the World Music Festival, the US Festival, uh, where we saw everyone from Aerosmith to Led Zeppelin, um, Rolling Stones. It, it was incredible, incredible. <laughs> but one of the best things we ever did, I think, was we go up to the Odd Fellows Temple in in uh, in Pasadena. I, I I couldn't find the place to save my life now, but I used to get there on my moped, and uh, we'd see Ronnie James Dio and um, Rainbow, um, lots of bands. Uh, play there um it was it was incredible and it's kind of the soundtrack to my life um whenever something happens one of the first things that happens so you know usually i can only imagine what it must be like to be a, a church leader that, that thinks of hymns all day long and 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 uh, cool scripture and stuff because what i do is i i go over lyrics i i was just listening to some leonard skinner uh, a couple days ago and i thought man you know that's that's really amazing. I I remember this this is a soundtrack to my life. Anything that ever happens, I I know the lyric to a song that goes with it. Um, and it's because I was able to see so many bands play. I I must have seen Van Halen maybe I don't know twenty five times, thirty times. Um, Queen, uh, the Who, the Who put on one heck of a show. That was that was just before their drummer passed away and died. Um, incredible. Um, yeah, it was at Rush. I saw Rush once, and and uh, yeah, it's really something. I I really used to enjoy that uh, so much that um, we uh, we got to know the people that ran the uh, facility, the the forum, and we got uh, security shirts, those yellow shirts that have security on it, so we could go and just wander around and make our way over to the stage and watch these guys right real you know right up close. Um, that that was I was there. I was there when uh, Steven Tyler passed out and uh, they had to helicopter him away and the band kept playing. Joe Perry just went and kicked him to see if he was still alive. And, um, and then Ted Nugent came on right after him and, and started bad mouthing Steven Tyler for wasting so much talent on drugs. Um, you know, stuff like that. You just, uh, it's just, it's just something else. I, I really enjoyed the, uh, the music scene back then. It was, like I said, it's kind of part of me. I, I, I actually have kind of a difficult time listening to choir music. Um, probably has something to do with that. The fact that it's just that it just lacks a certain appeal. It lacks the the drive and the and the emotion. Um, and now that I'm getting older, I I feel like a, a, a an idiot. I I end up getting choked up sometimes listening to listening to a uh, Mama Kin or uh, Seasons of Wither by by Aerosmith or, or some of the stuff. The Atomic Punk comes on from Van Halen and. And I get all misty-eyed thinking about it. And people look at me like, what the heck are you so upset about? <laughs> so I'm not upset, man. I'm just remembering the, and after, in fact, one of the cars I had, a friend of mine and I had a couple of girls and we went down to Balboa. The doggone starter motor went out in the car and we got on that ferry. Remember the ferry that takes you from the island to the peninsula? Yeah, yeah. Well, well, my, uh, my, I knew my start, that, that car wasn't going to start again. 
And uh, I told the guy on the boat, I said, I said, this, I can't turn my engine off. He said, if you don't turn your engine off, you're not going to be on, you know, I got to get you to leave. So I turned the engine off and sure as heck, car wouldn't start. We ended up having to push. Well, the point is, is that I had an eight track player in it and I had Van Halen on and, and I was pushing up. We had two really nice looking girls in the car and beautiful girls comes on and we're pushing the stupid, trying to push start the stupid car off of the ferry. It, it was really kind of, I thought it was funny. I don't know. No one else thought it was funny. <laughs> no one else listening to this is going to think it was funny, but it was funny. Trust me. <laughs> it was funny. I don't think we ever got another shot at those two girls because <laughs> they, they just wanted to go home after that. But I just remember the soundtrack. You know, I, I hear I hear the uh, song Beautiful Girls and I think of pushing a, a 4,000 pound vehicle off of a ferry and trying to jump start it on the, on the peninsula there. Oh, wow. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. I mean, music has definitely played a huge part in all our lives. And uh, there's so many moments that we can relate to songs. And, you know, we have it, uh, mishaps that happen like that. But in the end, everything works out for the best. So you, you have Audrey and you have your, your wonderful kids and grandkids now. Uh, what I wanted to ask you, Jeff, was actually a question going back to your, your youth. So uh, obviously, I got to know your family very well. And your, your mom, Ginger Haskins, is one of the sweetest, nicest ladies ever. But unfortunately, I never had the pleasure to, to meet your dad. And, because unfortunately, he did pass away when you were younger, if I remember correctly. So I was hoping you could share some of your favorite memories of your dad, favorite experiences, anything that you can remember most from him. Well, you know, my, yeah, my dad passed away. Uh, he, he was killed in a car accident in 1994. Uh, actually, um, I think it was uh, October 25th. I'll never forget it. Uh, I was on a job site in, the, in Simi Valley and uh, Audrey called me and, and told me he had passed away. And I've got, uh, if you want, I can tell you about um, the fact, see, they had been, they had been uh, disenfranchised from, from our church for about 10 years. Uh, leading up to about that year, um, and he had just become reactivated in uh, in the church. Mm. And that Saturday, the Saturday before that, was the first time he was able to attend temple um, in ten years. And uh, and then three days later, he was gone. Mm -hmm. um, it's just a, a, a that's an amazing story. And uh, anyhow, um, yeah, he uh, he was an amazing guy. You know. He was he was he was one of the smartest, most intelligent individuals. Uh, I mean, not just not just wow, he's really wise. No, I mean, he was statistically a genius. Um, he worked at Jet Propulsion Laboratory as an associate physicist, and uh, he um, he did twelve years of, of college uh, and never graduated because he changed his field of study every two years. Um, two years of his study was in philosophy, and. Uh, Back in, uh, I think it was, if I get the, I, I probably have the dates wrong, but it's probably around 1959, he, um, he uh, welcomed a couple of uh, missionaries into his living room, uh, having just studied philosophy um, for two years. And he thought, oh, great, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tear, tear these guys apart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to really show them where they're wrong here. And uh, make a long story short, um, he ended up meeting my, my mother um about uh i don't know about 10 years after that i think um he was already a member of the church mm -hmm. and uh and she was uh not uh well at least not active um they were married he had a couple of of boys that were significantly older than me and uh, they became my stepbrothers and and he actually adopted adopted me that's why my name is haskins now and um yeah he he was, he was an incredible guy. He, he really, he really uh, showed me what it's like to, you don't necessarily have to be uh, the biological father of someone to, to really have a deep connection with, uh, with your children. And um, my biological father means a lot to me, um, but there was a long period of time when he wasn't in my life. Um, and during that time, um, Glenn Haskins was my dad. And, uh, he, he taught me everything I know, my morals, my, my love of music. He was a musician, uh, not, not, a, not a classically trained musician, but the guy could, could basically mimic anything on a harmonica. Uh, you know, he's just a, one of those kind of guys. Taught me to love um, the music of Bach and uh, some of the classics, classical musicians. Um, 
And he also told me, taught me how to love and how to cherish my wife. And uh, one of the reasons that I think I'm still married after, don't quote me on this, I think it's 38 years, it might be 39, just don't tell Audrey, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> um, is because I've approached that relationship um, the same way he, with the same philosophy and the same um, morals that, that he did. He, he taught me, he truly did. You know, I, I started a talk a, a few years ago by saying, um, in the days of my youth, I was told what it means to be a man. Uh, you re recognize the lyric, right? Mm -hmm. and, um, and that's true. He's, he's the man. He's, he's the one. Um, he, as well as uh, my grandfather, um, really instilled uh, my grandfather, uh, from my grandfather, I get my work ethic and my craftsmanship. Um, mm -hmm. And from my dad, I get my uh, sense of duty and honor and my moral uh, code. Um, it's, a, it's a matter of a strict fidelity and, and, and very, um, uh, faithfulness is very important. I, need, I, didn't, uh, I didn't really understand it until I got married and I realized that you, uh, you, really, you really need to be a partner. Um, and uh, especially once you have kids. And I, I, I'm probably preaching to the choir here. But um, if, if, if you were to call him a stepfather, I would, I, would have to, I would have to argue the point that I don't think so. He really, um, you know, he, he shared with me his testimony and that testimony kept me going for a long time when I was out there uh, chasing, chasing Van Halen around and, and Aerosmith and, and girls and, and everything else. It was always his testimony and that, that light, the light tower uh, that I was able to follow home. Um, you know, that was very important to me. He really understood that. He, he was so much smarter than, than I could possibly. And I'll tell you something else. He became much smarter to me at the older I got. The, the older I got, I would, I would ask him more and more and rely more on that stuff. And I'd ask him questions. He'd tell me, he says, you know, kid, I've been trying to tell you that since you were eight years old. <laughs> I said, well, okay, well, I'm ready to listen now. Um, but uh, he, was a, he was an amazing guy. And uh, oftentimes I was with you boys and I would tell you something or teach you something that came directly from him. Um, I never gave him credit for that, but I might as well now. You know, if it wasn't for him and Dom Drink, I, I don't know what, have, what would have happened if I, if I ever would have bonded with you uh, young men as the way I did. And, and to this day, I, I, I have them to thank for that. Um, he, had some, he had some pretty, we, we did some pretty, pretty neat stuff together. He, he was a camper. He enjoyed camping and uh, taught me about the, the stars. I wish I'd paid more attention to him about constellations and stuff. Um, but uh, he, he was an amazing man. And I, you know, I owe my testimony to him at this point. I still do. My biological father was, was a, a carpenter and a welder. And he, was, uh, he worked with his hands. And he was able, he was a, a, an amazing craftsman when it came to fabrication. Um, he used to fabricate uh, trikes for the Hells Angels in Baldwin Park and, mm -hmm. uh, and Colton. And uh, we got exposed to a little of that when I was very young. And that, that was, you know, not necessarily the best influence that a yeah. boy could have, but uh, but it was interesting and and it taught me a lot. He, he taught me he taught me how to fight. He when I was young, very young, like uh, before I was in kindergarten, um, I had a very bad stutter. I had a, a severe speech impediment, and uh, kids would pick on me because I was put ahead from kindergarten into first grade uh, without having to go to kindergarten, and so I was very small. And the third graders would would tease me relentlessly and. Uh, I didn't want to go to school anymore. And he taught me, he taught me to defend myself or, you know, it's funny and say the best defense is offense. He taught me to fight and uh, gave me a lot of um, confidence and uh, got me kicked out of school is what it got me. But, <laughs> uh, but I gained confidence nonetheless. Mm -hmm. so, so I was very fortunate to have those two, those two parents, those, those two fathers that, uh, that showed me both ways. And, um, and I was, I was able to make, Ultimately, I was able to make a good decision out of that. 
Oh, that's an amazing story. Thank you for sharing, Jeff. Uh, I, I totally relate and agree to that, that uh, uh, my wife and I have uh, adopted a one-year-old baby boy, Liam, into yeah. our home. And he's been in our home since he was born, essentially. And we got to love and care for him and treat him like our own and the special bond that I have for him. I, I just love seeing him grow up and get bigger. Uh, so it's been a really worthwhile and rewarding experience for me. And as you mentioned, I mean, you don't have to necessarily be connected by by DNA, by blood. I mean, you can be father figures in in various ways. Uh, the, I'm fortunately very blessed that I had a wonder. I have a wonderful, amazing father who still I'm still obviously close to today. And of course, having the father like figures like you and Don and, and Mike Payne as well, who've given me countless uh, wonderful years of advice. So I'm truly grateful for all of that. Yeah, isn't that cool? Isn't that neat to be to be influenced by by good, worthy, strong uh, men? Um, mm-hmm. I, I love your father. I, I I wish I was able to serve with him more. I, I got to uh, associate with him more socially than uh, than in a calling. Um, but uh, but I've always admired him very much. Small business owner himself, yeah, and someone someone that I you know I really looked up to for his testimony and his uh, his ethics of service. I think um, really, really appealed to me and and, uh, guided me through the first, the early days of my service in church. Oh, wonderful. Very good. Very good. Uh, Well, that's pretty much all the questions that I had for you this evening, Jeff. Uh, Were there any other talking points you wanted to go over tonight? Anything related to music, uh, young men's or any experiences that we've had? Well, for heaven's sakes, I'm thinking, I I keep thinking of, uh, a racing, racing around, racing up uh, El Monte Avenue. Remember that? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how about were you in my car or Don's car? Uh, there might have been various times where we switched. Where I might have been with Jeff, with you, or I might have been with Don. So <laughs> remember what we were doing? We were doing about 110 miles an hour, but we were we were actually taking the sacrament. To- <laughs> oh, for for Shadens, yeah. Uh, so I mean, we were on the Lord's errand, right? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we were, and he wanted it done quick, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, oh was, that was fun. So much fun. So much fun. I, I don't know. You know, I mean, for heaven's sake, you couldn't get away with probably nine-tenths of the stuff that we did back then, but uh, you couldn't do that today. But, oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, it was very definitely a very special time for us to be together in the 90s, and I, I still cherish those memories and those friendships, and I try my best to try and keep in touch with everybody. So I definitely want to take you up on that that offer to try and get everyone together for a, a virtual hangout, record it, put it on the podcast. I think it'll be really fun. That would be a blast, and I'll, I'm, I'm in, absolutely. Just set it up, and I'll, I'll make time for it. Awesome. Okay. Well, thank you again so much, Jeff, for joining me tonight, for reminiscing, sharing your, your stories, and again... Uh, uh, we, we love you guys. You, you and Audrey are wonderful and great. And I'm so grateful that we had this opportunity to reconnect and, uh, and great, great to see that you're doing very well. Yeah, you got it, man. I'd love to talk to you some another time about, about uh, my courtship with Audrey. That was, that, that oh, was, that, would, that would be wonderful to do that. Yeah. So we'll definitely yeah. plan for another night for that. Yeah. Anytime, 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 uh, Albert, anytime at all. You let me know. Okay. Sounds good. Thank you, Jeff. Okay. You guys right. listening to the Casting for Fun podcast. Thanks, everybody. Yeah. You got it. Bye.